Well, you thought you were going to see a photo of the author, but my two daughters are a lot prettier, and they had to endure the endless visits to Valley Forge, Lexington, and Concord, Trenton, and other important Revolutionary War sites that made this program possible. In the past months, as I've delved into the Revolutionary War, reading thousands of pages of original source documents and secondary sources, a number of underlying themes have struck me that I would like to take this opportunity to share. The first, and foremost, is a recognition once again of the greatness of our Founding Fathers. While it is easy with 2020 hindsight to criticize their faults on issues of Native Americans or African Americans, it is impossible to read their speeches, deliberations, and letters, and not to be awed by what they had accomplished. For the first time in history, a group of people went to war, not over religion, not over territory, not over ethnic identity, and not even over economic reasons, but primarily over the issue of political rights. The majesty of their writing has not been matched again in American history. Interestingly enough, they had a great self-awareness. They knew and understood how historic their actions were and how they were changing history and creating a great nation. Side note is, they worked very hard. Look at the journals of the Continental Congress. They met every single day, day in and day out, six days a week, year after year after year. No vacations, no returning home to the home districts. In examining the history of the battles of the Revolutionary War, I was surprised to relearn how often the Continental Army was victorious in battle, and how few battlefield successes the British actually achieved. The traditional question that is always asked about the Revolutionary War is how could a small group of colonists ever expect to beat the greatest sea power on Earth? We've always been given answers such as the British had long supply lines, the French came and saved the American forces, or the stubborn fighting spirit of the American troops somehow prevailed against overwhelming odds. Well, on paper those odds were somewhat overwhelming. However, the British won but a few battles during this long war. When they did win battles, they were at a heavy cost and hardly ever gained any long-term strategic advantage. They were forced to withdraw from whatever land that they managed to capture. They could not hold on to the hinterland. They could maybe hold one or two port cities at a time. American victories, on the other hand, were decisive. Whether it was the Battle of Saratoga or the Battle of Yorktown, American forces managed to surround and capture a large part of the British Army in North America. So while the odds were long, the combination of all of the factors we had all learned in school, plus the grim determination of American forces and the superior generalship of Washington, consistently held the day. 